I hope my kids are not listening. Oh, believe me. Our kids gave up on this shit years ago. Meet Palebo, a digital nomad from Denmark on an epic journey around the world. At the age of 50, he made a bold decision. He sold everything, his house, his car, his furniture, and set out with a quest to visit every single country in the world, documenting everything along the way. Now that I am in Toronto, of course I had to go to Niagara Falls. It's just a short ride, a couple of hours around Ontario Lake. Later in this episode, you can join me inside a helicopter above Niagara Falls. But on the way down there, I was recommended to visit the small town Niagara on the lake. It's on the south side of the lake where Niagara River runs into the lake. This is the Radio Vagabond podcast. Before we get that far, let me take you back inside the studio with Humble and Fred. So, um, where we could hear the Radio Vagabond is as a podcast? Yeah. Nice. And, um, and I, I do that both in Danish and English. I do a, an English version called the Radio Vagabond. I was telling Fred before the show started reading about <clears throat> some of the stuff that you've been uh, involved in. Now, being nominated for a Con Lion Award is a big deal. It's a big deal, yeah. uh, My daughter's in advertising, and I know from... Her explaining to me what that is. It's yeah. it's quite the achievement. Yeah. Just being a finalist, it's, yes. a, it's huge. Well, that is something. Can you explain what that was like? <laughs> uh, See, that's what we're missing in morning radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's who we're Jokes missing. Like that. That's yeah. what we're missing. <laughs> that kind of talent is so expensive. You can't, yeah, uh, yeah. You can't afford that. I only let it out in little drips and exactly. drabs on this show. That's why it gets paid the big bucks. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, so that you so you sell all your stuff, like we met you as a couple of weeks ago now. So you've been in Toronto for the past two weeks. That's not cheap. Like, are you staying in like hotels? And- no, I'm, I'm I'm doing Airbnb. Oh yeah, uh, well, and, still. Yeah, and in in fact, my next venture will be uh, well, I, I'm going to Montreal, but after that, I'm going to the Bahamas. Uh, no, I, life's horrible. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and there I'm getting into the whole house sitting. Thing. Uh, and that's the thing where you take care of a house, maybe some pets. Well, no, a, co- uh, a co-worker of ours does it in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I've, I have a house in uh, the Bahamas for uh, almost three weeks uh, that I don't have to pay for. I have to do some chores. And, I get it. And, yeah. And do some so stuff. basically, you have the next. Uh, how? That's another thing I wanted to find out. So how? How many weeks, months in advance do you know where you're going? So after the Bahamas... I have no idea. You have no idea? And it was just yesterday. I didn't know if I was going uh, somewhere in the U.S. or uh, the Caribbean. So do you register to be a house sitter on a, a site? You get bonded, yeah. that type of thing? Yeah, well, it's I'm, I'm brand new to the thing. It's called Trusted House Sitters. There are different uh, ones out there, but this is the biggest one. I got to do that. Yeah, trust, That's what I got to do. Yeah. I got to become a trusted house sitter. Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk? I a little, agree, uh, honestly, because I think it's a great idea. It's I, amazing. I, I don't mind vacuuming a pool and cutting some hedges. I love that shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, what no. about Danish porn? Because <laughs> for a long time, uh, some of the great porn being made was uh, from uh, Denmark. Has the Danish porn industry kept uh, pace with the rest of the world? No, not at all. (laughs) (laughs) Damn! Because, you know, back in the day, back in the early days of porn, there was some Danish stuff going on. That's the homeland. (laughs) Yeah. On my way to Niagara-on-the-Lake, I drove through an area where, to my big surprise, I saw a lot of wineries. I didn't really expect Canada to be a wine-producing country. So I decided to stop by one of them and take a look inside. Yes, yes. So where is... We were trying to do it in Denmark. Well, some, someone is trying to do it. And we have sort of the yeah. same... Uh, what is your attitude? It is, it is, okay. it is no. It, it is in the northern part of Europe, of course. Right, but, uh, right. But, but this is also in the northern part right, of North so America. Just by chance, this was one of the biggest. It's called Trio's Vinery, and they produce so, white wine, uh, red wine, sparkling this, wine, uh, and then what they're mostly known for, like ice wine. And it has a Inside, I saw a very so beautiful so shop, and upstairs a room they call The Loft. And here I met their wine expert, Takahiro Ida. Taka, as he calls himself, is a Japanese who's lived in this area for 20 years. Before I came to Canada, I was, if I were to put some words on my ideas of Canada, it would be hockey, big trees, 
beautiful nature, huge country, the word wine would not be on the top of my list. But then I come here and find out that you're actually a wine producing country. Yeah, same thing. I moved to Canada over 20 years ago. I didn't think any. You're, you're, wine you're in originally Canada. from I'm my originally, last destination, Japan. I'm originally from Japan back in '97. So, yeah, I, I was surprised. It's a uh, Canadian, you know, produces amazing wine, especially last 10, 15 years. Yeah. Quality is improving. We started as ice wine producer, but we are now making beautiful Cabernet Franc, Chardonnay, Riesling. And then lately, Pinot Noir is doing really, really well. Yeah, yeah. Because of the cool climate. Yeah, well, the the, the climate is because now, uh, when this is recorded, we're in uh, just the early spring, so it's it, the weather is getting a, a little bit better. But to me, it was, I thought it was a little bit like uh, Denmark and Northern Europe. But then I looked at the map and see that you're actually closer. Uh, to uh, France and Italy. Exactly. We are located 43 degrees north latitude, which is similar to Bordeaux, even like a Tuscany in Italy. Mm -hmm. And then if you come back in the summer, actually, actually our summer is pretty warm. The temperature goes to 30, sometimes 33, 34 degrees middle of summer. So it's uh, enough sunlight and also again, 43 degrees north latitude. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, long uh, during daytime so it allows us a beautiful you know ripening season and then especially if september october is actually quite warm because of the lake ontario yeah. it's a huge pond that is just next to the vineyard is exactly. uh, uh help us uh you know warm climate in a fall season yeah so right now i i'm driving from uh, toronto to niagara on the lake uh, and and all of a sudden there's a lot of uh, vineyards around and a lot of signs for vineyards here and there and just before Niagara on the lake this beautiful place shows up and uh, I decided to make a stop here and I'm so glad I did because uh, you're one of the biggest uh, wine producers uh, ar around these parts. Yes, this is Trius Winery is owned by Andrew Pella Limited, uh, which is the largest wine producer in Canada. We have uh, a few other properties uh, called uh, Pella Estate and also 30 Bench. And the newly, uh, uh, brand new property is uh, uh, named after Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky Estate is uh, right beside yeah. us. It's right next door. Right next door, walking distance. Yeah. And, and for people who don't know Wayne Gretzky? It's a hockey player. Yeah. I'm also, because when I came to Canada, he was already uh, retired. So I'm not the like, real uh, Gretzky time, but uh, he's, a, he's a, the best hockey player in Canada. He's in fact a part of it? Yes, absolutely. He's a, a partnership with Andrew right. Peller. So you, you mentioned ice wines, uh, which is um, some kind of dessert wine. You do different types. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've just tried them out. And even though I'm no expert in any means, I really liked it. Uh, and also you do regular wine, uh, both white wine and, and red wine. Absolutely. And also sparkling wines as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You are listening to the Radio Vagabond podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave a review in iTunes. If you're listening on an iPhone, you can actually do it right there within your podcast app. And now, back to the show. Do you know how many bottles you produce a year? Because uh, it looks like you have a lot going on. Lovely about under two years label, Trees brand, uh, over 100,000 cases on your production. If you want to, to get some, some Trias, uh, w uh, what would it what would the best uh, choice be to to, to go? Yeah, so it's a good question. It's uh, definitely, I would pick Trees Red. Trees Red is not ice wine, it's a nice dry table wine. It's a full body red, blend of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc and Merlot. It happens to be first Bordeaux style wine produced in Canada. First vintage is the 89. And I would say that's the uh, signature wine. This one? Yeah, this is a Trius Red actually. I tried a, a lot of different and that is absolutely also my favorite. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking a couple my of bottle, bottles home. Yeah. Yeah, and this a beautiful a, bottle as well. Uh, this is definitely iconic wine to Trius and also I would say benchmark wine from Canada is the Trius Red. You know, there's a lot of guys 52 years old with uh, that would like to sell everything and just take off and 
very few guys have the balls to do it. So I ab- certainly admire you from that standpoint. And there really is something to say, this whole movement to minimalism, this whole mm-hmm. idea that we don't need as much as we you know, have. And, uh, and other than, uh, do, you, do you FaceTime with your kids and stuff? All the time, all the yeah. time. In fact, I speak more to my kids now than when <laughs> we were living under the same roof. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, Pally Bo, uh, what will your report be after the Humble and Fred show? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I, I need to think about all that. Right, I need just... to think about that because uh, all of a sudden they asked me about porn. Uh, is going to be the headline, uh, I think. Uh, Danish porn. <laughs> Niagara on the Lake is a very, very nice little town with a population of only 17,500. It's a kind of town that I could easily see myself having a nice vacation. Even though it's not that big, it has everything a small vacation town should have. Lots of restaurants and charming little shops. And then, a bit later, I stepped inside a helicopter that was going to take me above Niagara Falls. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ride of your life. As we begin our spectacular journey, we ask that you please keep your seatbelts fastened for the entire flight. To see it from a different angle. This is the finest helicopter of its class in the world. More importantly, it's also the safest helicopter ever produced. So relax and enjoy this unique aerial view of Niagara. Helicopter right now over Niagara Falls. This is uh, <laughs> this is so fun flying a helicopter. So That's insane, but I like it. Well, listen, my friend. I think we've learned a lot about uh, Denmark and you. I hope my kids are not listening. Oh, believe me, <laughs> our kids gave up on this shit years ago. <laughs> All right, Radio Vagabond. What a pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure. This episode is brought to you in part by Hotels25.com. It's a website that helps you find the best prices on hotels and guest houses and hostels around the world. Hotels25.com, best price guaranteed. Thank you to Taka, Humble, Fred and Niagara Helicopters because they were so kind to take me for a ride. If you're ever around that area, you should consider a helicopter ride. I put a link in the show notes. If you like this podcast, please subscribe in iTunes or the podcast app on your smartphone. You can see pictures, watch videos, and read much more on the RadioVagabond.com. Pale can be reached for interviews and public speaking gigs on mail at the RadioVagabond.com. Believe it or not, we'll have two more episodes here from Toronto. In the next episode, we meet an exciting young guy. His name is Paul Lam, and I met him in Chiang Mai. And then there'll be an episode where I speak to a handful of the locals and ask them what is the best part and what is the worst part about living in Toronto. This and much more in the Radio Vagabond podcast. My name is Palabo. See ya. See ya.